Hi, Floss Dude, it's Elisa on uh, February 9th, Tuesday. So, you'll see me hesitating a lot because I'm tr really trying to stop saying um in my videos. So instead, I'm just going to pause when I'm thinking and I'm hoping that I can gradually read myself off of the um. Because I've been using it a lot. I went back and rewatched some of my videos, and I am using it quite a lot. So, anyway, I have a couple of whips I worked on this weekend. I didn't get a lot of stitching done uh, because it was a really bad pain again. So, I did uh, some when I could stand it to distract me, and then when I couldn't stand it sitting up, I just had to put it down. But I got a little bit done. Um, and I started a new project, small one, but it's still new. So, um, I guess I'll just show you. This is probably not going to be a very long video. I'm still having pain issues, but I wanted to get it through it, um, uh, because, see? Ah, it just comes up. So I'm really trying to be conscious of it and not use it, because... I know there are some people like Carolyn Mazio. I don't know how she does it, but she her speech is so clear and concise. And I don't think she says um at all. <laughs> so I'm really trying to be very conscious of it. It's something that I used to be a little bit better at not doing. So. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you my progress on The Fifth Doctor, uh, a 3D doll. Ooh, by the way, um, the designer of this doll, Robin, Robin, I can't remember her last name, I'm sorry, Robin, um, she has a shop called Robin's Designs, and she has just posted, oh my god, a globe with, like, all of the, um, countries and all that it, it's amazing it's like eight inches it, apparently it's about the size of a soccer ball so cool like really cool so if you ever wanted to stitch the entire world you can now <laughs> um i think it's great i love her stuff you guys know i do i've ever since the beginning i've been raving about her it's an innovation to me it's it's bringing cross stitch out of the two-dimensional and I really think that's cool. Not that other people aren't doing it. I know I've seen a lot of, you know, um, you know, Bikornu is a very good example of 3D stitches. And people have done those a lot. But to move out of something like a pin cushion into something that is decorative on its own, I think is really innovative. So, without further ado, here is how much I've done. And... Granted, it's not a lot. Oh, I did put the white in there. I don't even remember putting the white in there. Anyway, glad I did. Uh, so, like I said, not a lot done. I didn't do anything on these pieces. But on this one, you can see I did the eyes. So he's got eyes now, and I filled in the mouth. Oh, my God, these eyes, they're so small, but there's, like, four color changes in it. A dark blue, a light blue, a black, and a white. <sighs> Those alone took me a while. And look how small they are. Oh my god, that was really annoying. Um, I started filling in more of the the light lightest blonde in his hair, and I only have really only the last little bit up here to do. So uh, that was a few hours on Saturday that I did that, and then I just had to stop. But I'm really happy how it's coming. It actually looks like a face now. Okay, isn't it cool? I'm so happy with it. Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to move on to the body. Because uh, it has a lot of very interesting um, fractional stitches. I was looking at it the other day. It has a lot of fractional stitches. A lot. And I'm stitching on 14 count meter. So that's going to be fun. But <laughs> especially his, I think his, the, the piece of celery on his lapel is almost all fractional stitches. Yeah. And I had to go over her pattern again because some of them there was like 
three. There was like a half stitch on this end, and then there was like a quarter stitch here and a quarter stitch there. I'm like, what the heck am I supposed to do there? So, um, yeah, I'm I'm a little wary of starting it, but I think it's gonna be great fun. I think it's gonna be a good challenge for me. Uh, thankfully, these pieces here they don't have any dark no stitches. It's all full stitches. So, yeah, he's got eyes. He's got an expression. Isn't that cool? I love it. Um, so that was that. The second one is a piece I designed myself based off of artwork I found online. Um, the artwork was created by, what is the name of the company? Coffee Powered Machine. Coffee Powered Machine. There, they do pixel art sprites for video games, and I saw this these sprites that they did in commemoration of one of my favorite authors who passed away last year, Terry Pratchett. Now, if you know Terry Pratchett at all, in a little bit, his main published works is are his Discworld books. Discworld is a very almost fantasy satirical social commentary kind of books but they I'm gonna miss me I, I just finished reading his second to last book so I only have one book of his left to read and I'm really kind of sad about that anyway so I found this this company in commemoration of him had put up a bunch of sprites of a lot of the characters out of his books and I me and my boyfriend both love these books so I thought for Valentine's Day I have to keep it down because I think he's sleeping but this is a surprise for him um, for Valentine's Day the if you guys know that map or if you guys know Discworld the main City, I'm just gonna be. Here is your Discworld primer. Uh, caught myself. On the disc, the main metropolis city is called Ankhmor Pork, and it is ruled by the patrician, who is basically a tyrant, but he's a good tyrant, so you know, everything kind of functions well, but he's still a tyrant. And his name is Lord Vetinari. Well, my brother or my boyfriend my brother ooh, that was a really weird Freudian slip um, my boyfriend really likes Vatnari he's a very clever clever character and so I took the sprite of Vatnari and I'm stitching it it's little because it is a sprite so it's only a little but I'm gonna probably put this in a small hoop to finish it off I'm hoping to finish it off this week it's only a very small stitch so that's what I have so far See, that's gonna be Betnari, and that's gonna be Waffles. Betnari's a very ancient dog. Uh, I love how it's coming out. Fortunately, I had most of the colors already for Waffles, the ones that the my stitching program put out for him. Um, I don't have all the colors for him. I'm gonna have to do some substitutions because I'm not gonna be able to get uh, any more new floss before. The end of this week for sure, and but not on but not day. Valentine's Day is on Sunday, so I'm just gonna have to make do with what I have. He basically has black hair with a bit of gray in it and a black cloak, and I need to figure out something for his skin tone. But he's gonna be cool. Isn't it awesome? I'm doing this on a little piece of Dove. Colored 32 count linen from Weeks Dye Worst, which I got from my stitchy mystery package before Christmas, which I really love. I needed something a little masculine, and this is a very nice, it's like a green color. It's also my first linen that I'm trying to stitch on, and I have to say, I don't like it. Because some of the threads are thicker and some are thinner, I'm having a hard time counting over two and having things line up, and I feel like my stitches are messy because of it, because they're, you know, 
they're not even. Some are thicker than others and some are thinner than others. And I really don't like that. Although I really like how waffles come out. Those are so cute. Waffles! Uh, disclaimer, I did ask permission from the original artists at Coffee Powered Machine to turn their uh, pixel art into patterns for my own personal use and to share freely if I do feel so. Um, as long, of course, as I give them credit because they are the artists and as someone who is going into an art-driven field, I'm definitely feeling the sting of people using artist work without their permission. So I definitely don't want to do that to another artist and I, um, I feel like I can do better. I can set a better example. So I emailed them and they were really cool. They were, they felt, you know, I thought it was really cool that I asked them. Um, and yeah, I am really happy with them so far. I created a little bit of um, lettering here and it's going to read, um, this is, I'm making a new but it's going to read, you are the tyrant of my heart. So it's kind of cute. It, it sounds a little you know, misogynistic if you think about it, but it, it kind of, it's kind of, I can just hear some of them. Anyway, it's, it's all about context and, and I think he's going to really like it. So I have a little tiny hoop that I'm probably going to put this in when I'm done. But yeah, I don't like stitching on linen. And this is good that I can answer this because I'm trying to cut, uh, I'm thinking about kidding up Gypsy Queen this year. Mary Billion's Gypsy Queen. Oh, if you have not seen it, oh my god, she's gorgeous. Like, gorgeous. The first time Mary Billion's actually grabbed my eye. Oh, my really itchy eye. I'm so sorry. And because of that, where was that? Yeah, so I've been looking at different hand dyed fabrics. Uh, I've looked at the viewer, which is a great resource. Oh my god, I love that thing. I could do that for hours and hours and hours, just picking pretty fabric for different patterns. And I finally found one I think I well it's it's between two. There's birthday candles by Jodry Designs which the picture I saw on the viewer was a linen. And I know from what I've heard from dyers that linens take dye a lot darker than even weaves, which is what I like to work on. And I wasn't, I really liked the bright, bold colors of the linen. And anyway, so the, I, Michelle of Jodry on the floss tube, Oh, not floss too, sorry. On Facebook, she was sweet enough to post a picture of uh, birthday candles on even weave that she had just dyed and showed them to me. And I think it looks awesome. It might be a little paler than I expect, I, 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 I would like, but still it looks awesome with all the really bright colors behind her because she, she's a gypsy. She needs something bright and colorful and garish. Like that's how I see her. Um, she already is mostly. Like she's this pink and purples and oranges and oh she's so pretty and so I need to find just the right fabric for her the other one I had was I'm gonna I know I'm gonna say the wrong person I it was fiery skies and I'm not sure now if it was hand dyes fabrics by Stephanie or under the sea fabric might have been in a zoo. Let me just check real quick. I really don't want to be saying the wrong person because. <sighs> so how are everyone doing? Yeah? That sounds good. How's the weather? It's snowing here for us. Finally. Like seriously. We've had the most mild winter I've probably ever had in Canada in my entire life. Which is saying something. Okay. That took a lot longer than I thought. My internet being extremely slow. So it was, uh, it was Under the Sea Fabrics, and it was Fiery Skies, and it's a combination of like a turquoise and 
like a rust color. It's really, really pretty. Very, very dramatic, which is definitely what I need for a gypsy theme. So I've been looking at all these fabrics, and I've been thinking, oh, could I just do it on linen? Would I be happy with linen? Because I really like the brightness and the boldness that linen dyes rather than you know, even weave, because even weave does tend to dye lighter. But after stitching this on linen, I don't think I would be happy with a big piece on linen. I think I would get extremely frustrated and not like it. So I'd rather, you know, forgo some of the brightness of the colors for a nicer stitching and a nicer finish, to my eye anyway. I know there's lots of people, I could see myself using linen for primitive sam uh, samplers or Quakers or those kind of simple patterns, but something that is not really full coverage, because I don't think you can call Mirabilia full coverage, but the ones that there's a lot of stitching, not just stitching lines or stitching, you know, designs, I did not explain myself right. Anyway, so yeah. Learning experience. I don't really like switching on linen, but that's okay. I will finish this hopefully this week. And then I will really probably stitch on linen again. So, yep, I'm really kind of happy with that. Another new start, which I probably didn't need, but it's a small start. And I'm doing good at small things. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm liking them because I get finishes in, which is a bonus for me. So, uh, the last thing I think I'm going to talk about is Secret Stitcher. So we have currently 36 people signed up, which is the same as last week, which was fine. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm a little torn between wanting it to be the most amazing event ever and have the most, you know, stitchers possible involved to, and just making sure that it runs smoothly for everyone. So maybe the smaller number... And it's not really small. That's still 36 people. That's still a lot of people. Maybe that's fine for the first run. Maybe if it goes really well this year, it will... Uh, we could do it next year. Because I really do think that this could become some kind of yearly event, which I would really like to do. Because I think that these kind of exchanges are a lot of fun for the community. So... I know I've been a bit subdued. It's really early in the morning. I usually do these a little later, but last time I was really rushed before going to school, so I didn't want to do that. School is going well. Quite well, actually. Uh, we just started, we're just starting today, basically, to work on our first game for a game showcase in April, which a little bit of pressure, but it should be a lot of fun. So that's exciting. And yeah, so things are going okay. Uh, I surviving, which is one of you know, the important things. So I'll leave you guys there because I really don't have anything left to say. Oh no, you can see my horribly scratched up couch. Yeah, this couch is less than a year old. And my cat got to it like within days, so unfortunately. Um, oh crap, there I go again. It's such a hard habit to break, like so hard when it's something that is so part of your vocabulary. It's like trying to I don't know. It's something it's really hard to start changing your speech patterns consciously. You have to be conscious of them because a lot of the times things just slip out. So that's it for today. I told you it was going to be probably a small video. Well, small for me, I guess. It's still under 20 minutes, I believe. So that is all. I will probably be back next week for a CG update on... But most definitely, I, I hope, near across, I'll have the one finish to show, and maybe a little bit of progress on the doctor. Because I really, I really, love him. although I've been really desperately wanting to work on 
my story time sampler. I just wish I could freaking find it. This is not cool. I can't believe I lost it. I was liking it so much since I got the, you know, 20 account Lugana to do it on. I was loving it. Anyway, uh, enough moping. So, I hope you guys all have a great Stitchy week, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!